on sight if we ain't too. These groups, and I won't name them. They know who they are. We're not going to tolerate any any retribution, any revenge. We're going to watch. We're going to be around paying attention to what's going on. 11, a Jacksonville rapper who made numerous headlines over the last couple of years was shot and killed overnight. Some of the things he said and had done had been memorialized over and over and over again. And, and in some way, he, you know, he was held in high esteem, but he was also creating himself to be a big target. So. In the early hours of June 23, 2024, the streets of Tampa, Florida, became the backdrop for a tragic event that would send shockwaves through the hip-hop community and beyond. As rapper Julio Fulio celebrated his 26th birthday, he had no idea that the night would end in bloodshed. And now in the aftermath of the incident, the local community holds its breath as it prepares for even more bodies to drop. Fueled by revenge and grief, KTA ops are openly sending warnings to ATK for taking out one of their own. Here's everything we know about the situation. Rapper Julio Fulio hit the streets on June 23, 2024 to celebrate his 26th birthday. He kicked off the celebrations in an Airbnb in Tampa, Florida, hours before he hit up X with a tweet celebrating the occasion. He wrote, God, thank you for allowing me to see another year and to celebrate another birthday. Appreciate all the birthday wishes so far. Little did he know that it would be his last. Fulio documented the celebrations on his IG throughout the night. He was eventually kicked out for violating the property rules. That's when he hit up Holiday Inn to keep the party going. According to Fulio's lawyer, Louis Fosco. Mr. Jones had been in Tampa to celebrate his birthday over the weekend. Law enforcement reports indicate that he initially stayed at an Airbnb, but was asked to leave due to exceeding occupancy limits. He subsequently relocated to the Holiday Inn, where he was involved in an incident in the hotel parking lot and reportedly ambushed. Apparently, Julio was chilling outside the motel along with three of his homies when two whips pulled up out of nowhere and rained down a barrage of bullets around 4.40 a.m. All four of them were injured and were were promptly taken to the hospital. However, that night, Julio ended up losing the battle of life before he could even receive medical assistance. The news shook the community to its core, reminding everyone once again of the risks that come with hanging out in the streets. What's interesting is that Julio went out the same way he dissed his ops for passing away in his track, When I See You. He dropped bars like, went out to eat on his birthday four shot, three dead in the worst way, he kept dissing on me, now we smoke in 23, taking shots at the incident involving Yungi Nace that claimed the lives of his brother. However, as friends and family struggle to wrap their heads around the tragedy, Julio's ops have been having a party. Not 24 hours after his passing, ATK members took to social media to mock Julio. Yungi Jane Ace's right-hand man, Queso, posted a simple June 23rd on his IG story, but everyone and their grandma knew who he was talking about. 23KB also celebrated the demise of his op by posting an IG story with his song, Dead Guys. He also unlocked a new level of pettiness by giving a five-star review to Holiday Inn, the motel in front of which Fulio's entourage was lit up. But that wasn't enough, and so the rapper posted pictures of himself with a blank in front of the motel. We also got rapper Spinabend's disrespect respecting the dead. He tweeted, game over, we won. But ATK ops need to watch their words. Right now, KTA is hurting and they won't hesitate to even the score. If there's one rule that the streets adhere to religiously, it's an eye for an eye. However, the most lethal diss came from Julio's sworn enemy, Yungin Ace. Hours after Julio's passing, Yungin tweeted, that boy going back the same day he came in. However, he quickly deleted the tweet. Now a lot of folks thought that Ace was playing it safe to avoid having the authorities look in his direction, but it seemed like he had other reasons because on June 23rd, 2024, the same day Julio passed away, Ace dropped a diss track, Do It, which many seem to think is meant to mock Julio's memory. Heck, there's even speculation about Ace admitting to taking out Julio himself. He dropped verses like, I don't even call him by his name, I call them N-words, Lil Do It's. B-words call the phone, say they got the low. I told them do it, I ain't sparing stuff, it's on site if we into it. He with his baby, do it, he with his B-word, do it with his mama, do it. This money make a N-word, do it. And in another verse, he goes, Stolens and rentals with choppers and killers in it. Catch his A-word and do his A-word. You know he finished flip his A-word and smoke his A-word. We stand on business. All my N-words get active. Jump in car. We out in traffic.
The music video for the song has garnered 3 million views and counting as Young Jean Ace cashes in on Julio's demise. But at the same time, we got rappers with a conscience looking down on Ace speaking ill of the dead. Rapper Tay Capone shared his two cents on the situation on X writing, Rest in peace, Fooly. He was cool. We chopped it up multiple times. He was a supporter of mine too. So it's all love. But this is the main reason I stopped dissing the dead. The universe has a funny way of showing you the same stuff that make you laugh, make you cry. I done seen this before. At the same time, we got rappers like Natalak honoring Fulio's memory. Natalak had the opportunity to work with Julio before his passing and he said, he was very respectful. The type of people when I hear about Fulio from other people about I don't like him or whatever, I never met that guy. He also gave his two cents on the tragedy saying, it's a painful ordeal all the way around. These kids are half my age and I'm expecting them to be fathers and mothers, and they don't grow up at all. It's very disappointing. And so Ace's provocative statements serve as a catalyst, inflaming raw emotions and setting off a new cycle of retaliation. The pain of loss is deepened, the wounds are reopened, and folks brace themselves for yet another round of bloodshed in this seemingly endless feud. Over the years, the local community has witnessed a tragic cycle of violence, as the two gangs, ATK and KTA, have spilled blood in the name of retribution. Each act of vengeance meant to even the score has only resulted in more pain and loss, with no winners emerging from this deadly feud. The beef between ATK and KTA stretches back further than many can remember. Yet, in the shadow of their relentless conflict, the only constant has been the rising toll of shattered lives and grieving families, and the beef between Julio and Ace has been at the center of it all. It all started when Julio's cousin Zion Brown was taken out after a man broke into his West Side home in May 2017 and shot him. Zion was only 19 years old and his passing had ATK aka Ace's top killers fuming. A few months after the shooting, Authorities were able to pin the incident on 19-year-old Deontre Thomas. And get this, Thomas was one of Young Gein's homies. Seven months before the Zion incident, these two were at the center of a plot to rob a marijuana seller at Orange Park. However, KTA aka Kill Them All did not find any comfort in Thomas's arrest. They wanted to spill blood to even the score, and that's exactly what they did. Back in June 2018, Ace hit the streets with 18-year-old Royale Devon Smith Jr., aka 23, 19-year-old Jerkaby Deshad Groover and 18-year-old Trayvon Bullard, a.k.a. Ace's younger brother. They were out celebrating Trayvon's birthday when some ops pulled up on them and sprayed them down. Ace ended up taking eight shots. However, it wasn't his time because he managed to survive. Unfortunately, his brother and the rest of them weren't as lucky. The horrifying incident sent shockwaves through every neighborhood, underscoring the fragility of existence in a place where violence reigns supreme and peace is but a fleeting dream. But did it put an end to the meaningless rivalries? Absolutely not. Instead, Ace's ops rubbed salt on his wounds. Charles Jones created a t-shirt that featured Royale Devon Smith Jr.'s face with the phrase, rest in P word 23. Julio didn't back down either as he released a diss track, When I See You. He dropped verses like, slide through the 12, I don't see nobody outside P-boy. You don't get no rep off doing drive-bys Ace from the West. How he clicked up with the East Side. He ain't been the same since he seen the other three die B word. I'm two three high B word say your goodbye gave that boy the business like a suit and a bow tie light them boys block up like the fourth of july they got caught lacking the whole world want to know why Now, Fulio wasn't exactly making friends, and so blood continued to be spilled on the streets. Fast forward to January 2019, and someone lit up the Paradise Gentlemen's Club, taking rapper Boss Goon's life. Queso also had one of his family members injured in the shooting. ATK struck back by taking out Charles Quentin McCormick Jr., a.k.a. Lil Buck. Next month, Fulio lost his Lil brother Adrian Garner, a.k.a. Bibby, at Jacksonville's Hilltop Village Apartments. And like always, Fulio's ops didn't miss the opportunity to poke fun at his pain. Queso released a mixtape Bibby out with pictures of the dead slapped on the cover. And just like that, the relentless cycle of violence persisted, driven by pride and vengeance, leading to yet another heartbreaking loss. Julio's tragic end serves as a grim testament to a conflict that seems destined to claim more lives, leaving the community to mourn and wonder when, if ever, 
the senseless bloodshed will cease. However, if there's one thing everyone knows for sure, it's that the beef between ATK and KTA is far from over. That said, everyone from ATK speaking up might want to play it safe because word on the street is that the cops are closing in on the suspects. According to reports, the authorities have narrowed down the culprits to members of a Jacksonville gang. However, they refrained from dropping any names. On June 24, 2024, Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters shared an update about the case at a press conference saying, These groups, I won't name them, they know who they are. We're not going to tolerate any retribution, any revenge. We're going to watch. We're going to pay attention to what's going on. These groups, I won't name them, they know who they are. We're not going to tolerate any, any retribution, any revenge. We're going to watch. We're going to be around paying attention to what's going on. He also said, at this point, that's the only one we have tied to those Jacksonville groups. But more importantly, KTA ops need to put a hold on any revenge schemes because the sheriff clearly said that the authorities are on high alert about possible revenge-fueled shootings. He said, we're not going to allow you to just arbitrarily run around and spray bullets into people's houses and cars. We're not going to tolerate any retribution, any revenge. We're going to watch. We're going to be around paying attention to what's going on. And if it takes us following them one at a time, then we'll do that. Maybe secretly, maybe overtly, but we'll keep them off balance so they can't shoot up cars and houses and whatever they want to do. We're not going to allow you to, to just arbitrarily run around and spray bullets into people's houses and cars and um it's just something that we're going to pay very close attention to, and I want, the, I want the public to be vigilant. Waters also said, I think young people think this is a game. Jones has a mother, you know. He has parents, siblings, probably, friends, and they have to deal with these kind of losses, and it's unfortunate. It should never happen to our kids, and I've never seen so much devaluing of human life, you know, like it's fun. And they talk about it in rap videos and songs. It just, it doesn't make any sense. I think, um, young people think this is a game. And, uh, you know, there'll be comments about this in the comment in the statement that I make. And they'll, they, they, they make it like it's, a, like it's a video game. It's not. This is real life. So he has a mother. You know, he has parents. He siblings, probably, friends. And um, they have to deal with these kind of losses. And it's unfortunate. It should never happen to our kids. Uh, and I, I've, I've never seen so much devaluing of human life. You know, it's like it's, like it's fun. And they talk about it and... Uh, in, in rap videos and songs and it's just doesn't make any sense. What's more, before making any moves, KTA might need to take into account the fact that it might be one of their own that signed Julio's death warrant. There are speculations going around that Julio was backdoored. And so as the city of Jacksonville grapples with the aftermath of the young rapper's passing, the community remains on edge. Law enforcement vows to crack down on retaliatory violence, but the deep-seated rivalry between ATK and KTA continues to threaten any semblance of peace. Amidst the mourning and calls for justice, there are whispers of betrayal and the possibility that Fulio's fate was sealed by someone within his own circle. As investigations unfold and the community seeks solace, the hope remains that one day, the cycle of violence will end and the streets will finally see peace. The CEO of Quench the Violence says one thing that will help fight gun violence is coming together. We're trying to bring the pastors, the politicians, the police, the parents, and the people together and show some unity. They never let those who are in these streets commit these violent crimes see that we're trying to do something about it.